Hello, and welcome to another episode of Vandoan Gardens. Here it is, March 1st, and this is what my overwintering hot peppers look like. And they're still in their pails from last year, so any aphids or things that might have been inside got brought inside. So I didn't obviously get any peppers. I don't have any fruit here, really. And I, if there was any fruit left on the vines, I didn't eat any because I sprayed the heck out of it liberally with mosquito fogger as well as um, neem oil and, uh, you know, just, just different pesticides because my job here isn't to try to get them to fruit but to get them to survive. So I trimmed a lot of them way back and you can see that the stems are still green on many of them so hopefully when I start to harden them by bringing them outside some of them will bounce back some of them I'm sure will die a good indication of one that's gonna die even though some of these stems are green you see how there's a it's hollowed out there so if you keep trimming back and it keeps on being hollow all the way down to the base that's when you know you're probably not going to be able to survive you also see the yellow sticky tape for the little mites that keep on trying to fly around. So this is kind of what's keeping my basement from... My basement isn't really full of mites because of those sticky tapes, I think. Um, I put nematodes in there late in the season. I don't know if that did anything to help. But for light, I just have a regular old fluorescent, but with... 6500k or 6500 what is the frequency that is good just for general daylight and i also have a nice um all frequency growing bulb here that's all led and these guys are hooked up to a timer where the timer goes on for eight hours and then off for 16. there is my worm farm these guys are doing good basically every piece of scrap paper that I get. I just shred it up, stick it in there. Cardboard, shred it up, stick it in there. And here is my grow room. I had some of those plants in this grow room over the winter, but not one of them really survived it. So I've got my patented snow shovel counterweight. My old foam board that I found to contain some insulation and this is some some painters tarp that I have draped over the entirety of it and what that does is it keeps it nice and hot in here so I've got a little system up top that I can hang my lights from I got my fan still in here from last year oh and you hear how that heater just went off so that heater and that mat, heating mat, are connected to an ink bird. Um, I don't see the nomenclature on it right here. But you see I got it set for 74 degrees. So when it gets down to about 70, it'll kick back on. And I keep my little plants here under some more plastic. Just to keep some humidity inside of there. My light is a root farm and I've also got another one of those all frequency lights that I got from not Trader Joe's what the heck was it odd lot those but what we got here oh yep you see I got some mitigation for those guys I'm trying to Catch them as they start to fly. But, um, what do we got here? So in today's, this year's crop, I always start my super hots first because they can take up to a month to germinate. So I got some Javanero Red, Black Pearl, Gator Jigsaw, White Murphy, Orange Glow, and a Scotch Bonnet. Papa Creedle. That's how they, that's labeled. So I got a Serrano, 
Jalapeno, Brazilian Orange Starfish, oh, SL, SLSB, which is, I think, I think I have two of those. So, I, well, there, got a Lightning, got a Hatch, Bishop's Crown, KS Lemon Starburst. So that's what I think is over there, just in a different abbreviation. There were two different packets, so I planted them both. But I think that KSLSB is the KS Lemon Starburst. Just in a different abbreviation. Thai Ornamental, which I love those. They're really good flavorful, even though they say that they're ornamental. Scotch Bonnet again. I love Scotch Bonnets. They're one of my favorites. Habaneros are my favorites. Red Fresno from Wegmans. Just trying to... I collected some of the seeds. And uh, Buena Mulata. So, these guys have been in here for about a, a, a week, and you see that the bishop's crowns are currently at that stage. So, the lemon starburst, you can see it poking around. And I think there was one or two other ones that I saw a little bit of growth on. Oh yeah, there we go, the black pearl. And that little guy coming up. So, the temperature knows to go on and off because of this probe that I have in the soil, because I don't really care what the air temperature is, I care what the soil temperature is. I want these seeds to be not too cold, not too hot. I've heard some people going up to 80. I don't need it to be 80, I don't think. I can't imagine that it gets to be 80 degrees outside. I had a jar of honey that kind of crystallized, so I got that on the heating mat next to the heater to see if it can soften up. Before long, this whole thing is going to be just teeming with plants. As soon as these guys are sprouted, I'll move them up to bigger pots. And uh, after I move them up to bigger pots, and I'll start other seeds in here. I want to do more flowers outside because we've got bees coming in April. So that's what the grow room looks like as of March 1st or 2nd. No, it's March 2nd right now. Um, 2022. Thanks, and like and subscribe.